What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and this is the JLU Build. Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Axial SCX24 JLU Build. So this is one of my favorite builds here. I just love this Jeep. It really responded so well to upgrades, and I think you're going to be really surprised at how little it took to get this thing to flex all the way up to six tires. This thing is by far the flexiest rig that I have. And just recently got even more so with uh, some linkage upgrades that we're gonna talk about today. So like the Gladiator build, we're gonna break this up into three components. So we're gonna look at the exterior, we'll look at the aesthetics and kind of the visual appearance of it. We're gonna look at the chassis and the suspension, and then we'll look at the drivetrain. But first, let me give you just a quick history of how I got the JLU. So my son and I went into the hobby store and I actually went there to get the new Bronco. And I had my heart set on a red Bronco. We went there, picked it out, loved it, got it out of the box. And my son, he's four, immediately took it over. He was so enamored with the Bronco that I knew there was no way I was getting near that thing. But at that point, the Gladiator had been pretty well built and I was really itching for another project. So I was going back and forth on what to get and I thought I'd really like to have that JLU and my son twisted my arm not really it didn't take much twisting and we ended up going back to the hobby store that same day and purchased the JLU and this became my next project so the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited is special to me because the vehicle I had before my Gladiator that I have now for my daily driver I had a 2016 JKU, which was the body style before the JLU. So I've always loved the Wranglers, and I had that built up with lift and big tires and everything on it. So I've always had a soft spot for the Wranglers. So I was itching to build one of these anyway. So we uh, we picked it up and started modding it right away, and uh, just fell in love with it and how well it responded to upgrades and how quickly it became one of the most capable rigs that I have. So let's dive into it. Again, let's take a look at the appearance part for number one, and then we'll dig into the rest of it. Okay, taking a look at the exterior of this. First thing you'll notice is probably the, uh, the wheels and tires and how it sits. So we'll look at the wheel and tire setup first, and then we'll get into how I got this kind of low slung look as we get into the suspension components of it. But the wheels and tires, so it's running the RC four wheel drive stamp steel beadlock wheels. Like my other builds, I flipped these around for width. You know, I rotate the hubs around. So that gives you three or four extra millimeters per side of width. You also get that nice kind of deep dish look. And the tires are the RC four wheel drive scramblers. These are a great tire. I think they fit the Wrangler really well. They're a big tire, but they're not overly big. I had uh, Trail Kings on this for a brief time and I thought they just looked too kind of cartoonishly big. So I've gone back to the scramblers here. These are vented. So I vent the tires with a leather punch. I do two holes uh, parallel to each other on the tire and I run Crawler Innovation Little Nova soft foams in these. So they're ultra ultra squishy on this thing. It grips like mad and these tires conform like nobody's business. So this thing is a, is a performer, especially out on the rocks. It has Injura steel rock sliders on the side of it. I ran these on the Gladiator for a little bit, but then I replaced them and bolted them onto the JLU. Uh, these are good just from mostly a aesthetic point of view. They are functional. You know, as you can see underneath, they, they have taken some hits over the, the months and, and hours that this thing has been out on the rocks. So they do function pretty well, but mostly this was just an aesthetic and kind of a scale appearance mod. For the front, I went with this RC Lions Stinger front bumper. I like this bumper, one, because it looks fantastic. I think it really complements the looks of the Jeep. But I really like this because of how well it sits on the Jeep itself. So it's super flush against the bumper. It's got a great fit and finish, and it's stubby. It's also, you know, it, it's 
only about a quarter of an inch deep. So there's not a lot of interference in your approach angle with this bumper. I really like that a lot. And it is functional. Again, you know, if um, you saw the Gladiator build, you know, I could talk about the Stinger on that one. This one works really well also. So Stingers, their job is to save you from rolling over forwards when you come down on a steep decline. And this one does work. So it does have some function to it. But again, mostly just an aesthetic thing here. You can also see I cut the fenders on it. So when you run these big tires and you want to get that articulation, you know, you gotta gotta have room. So I trim the fenders on these. Again, I did some research on on some steel fenders, some aftermarket steel fenders, kind of what I would like to look on my real JLU if this was a one-to-one. -one. And that's what I kind of modeled this after. So it's a clean kind of organic shape here that I cut with some tin snips and then shaped with sandpaper. In the back, I did the same thing. I cut the back down pretty significantly. The JLU had pretty small fenders in the back to begin with, but we just, we trimmed those down even more and just left a little bit to, uh, again, give it that kind of steel fender look from a scale perspective. I had a spare tire on the back of this for quite a while. I liked that look off and on, but it just, it really hurt my vertical climbing ability. Um, you know, almost like it was so detrimental that that thing had to go. And that was just recently I took this off and taking that off the back totally transformed it into a, a whole new beast. So I'm really loving this thing lately. I think that's about it from an appearance standpoint. Let's take a look at the chassis and suspension. One of the most common questions that I get on Instagram, especially when I post pictures of the JLU here, is how in the world do you get it to flex like that? I mean, here it is. She's flexing on six tires easily. And you'll be surprised it really didn't take a whole lot. So let's take a look at the suspension and chassis setup that I used to get this amount of flex out of this JL here. Let's pop the body off real quick. So for suspension, I'm running the RC Lions double barrel 43 millimeter shocks. Got these off Amazon. These are $20 specials off of Amazon. I really love these shocks. They work fantastic. I have these on three of my rigs and I have no complaints with them. I think they're, uh, they're smooth and I've had no issues with them. They, uh, they work really well right out of the box. And I've got these set up. As you can see, they're mounted to the frame on front and back and I run them with no springs. So that's how you get that ultra droopy look is that you know, mount them to the frame, take the springs out so it sits fully bottomed out. And then with no fenders on it in the big tires, that's how you get that really low slung, aggressive belly dragger look to it. And the JL just rocks that really well, I think. But the suspension works fantastic on this platform. Yeah, it's uh, just the right length in width, I feel, that it just articulates so well and it works so good out on the rocks and on the obstacles. It uh, just uh, responded so well to these shocks and kind of this droopy setup. So I was uh, really impressed with this right away. Let's flip it over and look at the linkage. So it is running the Endura high clearance links. So these are the aluminum linkage set that Endura offers and it is four linked in the front. So four link does offer a little extra articulation, but primarily what it does is it just eliminates the friction with the drive shaft when you are articulating. So let's see, there's no rub with the drive shaft on those links here. And it does give it more flex. You know, this was not clearing six tires before I did the four link conversion on it. So I'm pretty confident that that helped gain quite a bit of articulation. I set these up, I run one O-ring on each of the linkages and that just makes it operate a little smoother. So again, probably get a little bit more articulation out of it just because the linkages can pivot a little more. So when you've got all of the corners working together with just a little bit more articulation in the joints, it adds up to a noticeable difference. So that's worked really well for this. From a steering perspective, this is running an Emacs servo. I run the analog servos 
on this one. It's got the Endura aluminum servo horn. It's got a hot racing steering linkage in the front here. And I think that's about it from the chassis and suspension. Pretty basic stuff on this one, but it performs really well. It just comes together and uh, really creates a really nice operating package. So now let's get into the drivetrain here. Let's take a look at the drivetrain. So starting with the motor. So this is running the Endura 66 turn 50 size motor. And this motor works great in this rig. And I have this motor in three of my rigs now and I'm really impressed with it. It just, uh, it's got great low speed response. It's nice and torquey, super duper smooth maintains about the same speed as the stock unit but um, tons of more torque so I'm really happy with this motor set up in here uh, the taller JLU body allows me to run the bigger batteries because when you upgrade the motor and the servo totally kills your battery life so this is running the uh, 900 MAH batteries on it and these are tricky to fit in the C10 or the Gladiator, but they fit perfect in the JLU or the Bronco. So I'm really grateful for the tall body to be able to fit these big batteries in here. Let's flip it over and take a look at the drivetrain. So I really haven't done much to the rest of the drivetrain. It's got stock drive shafts, stock axles, but what I did do is I put the plus five millimeter axle extensions and it's got the heavy hex extenders and uh, hex weights here. These, all four in total, add about 70 grams of weight. These are really heavy. I think they're about 16 to 17 grams a piece in uh, each, each of the corners. So that makes a big difference. And the width, of course, is a huge one when coupled with the reversed hubs on the wheels. Gives it a really nice wheelbase here. I'm running the Hot racing diff covers front and back. I'm running the 9 gram diff cover in the back and the 13 gram heavy boy in the front to really you know, bias the front from a weight perspective. And then lastly, you know, I probably should have talked about this in the chassis and suspension, but it is also running the Endura brass steering knuckles here. I think these are about 8 grams a piece. So again, just trying to keep the weight shifted forward to uh, bias the front and give it a good weight distribution. So as you can see, not a whole lot done to this as far as drivetrain modifications. But again, it's it, the package just works so well together that it's just really, really impressive. All right, I think that about wraps it up for the build. As you can see, not a whole lot really done to this thing. I went at it with the same approach that I do with most of my rigs. I go after you know, widening out the wheelbase Put a lot of weight in the front, get those wide wheels and tires, the double barrel suspension, and get them set up properly. And then when all that kind of came together with the JLU, like right away, it was just like the thing was totally transformed and was a rock star right out of the gate. Um, just works so well. This is one of my my favorite rigs. It performs insane out on the rocks. It's it's not so much of a climber. From a vertical climbing standpoint, the short wheelbase and kind of the, the taller body makes it suffer a little bit from a vertical climbing standpoint, but where it really, really shines is on kind of the flat, rocky, gnarly surfaces because this thing can articulate like nobody's business, and it's so much fun to watch. I get such satisfaction out of watching this thing move around and articulate, and it's just a ton of fun. So definitely one of my favorite rigs for that reason. They, uh, they're all great in their own right. And this one is the dominator when it comes to just plain old rock crawling. So tons of fun. Let's see if I can when I show you a trick that it can do just recently. Call it the Air Flex. So she doesn't even need tires or anything to stand there and flex. She's so proud. I'm just Jeep wave here to sign us out with a good jeep wave here from the jl all right that's going to wrap it up for this video i hope this answered your questions about the jlu build i get a lot of questions on instagram about this build and it's crazy that it didn't take a whole lot to get it here so if there's any more questions you know please let me know down in the comments happy to get into it in more detail or address something more closely that i might have kind of grazed over as always 
I'll put the links in the description as well for the products that I used in the build if you want to check them out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you've not done so. We're going to keep growing the channel. We're going to keep bringing you this good RC content. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching, and we see you next time.